In this video, we're going to be modeling a high poly sniper scope. Now, we're making this model for the AWM sniper rifle, which we modeled in the past three videos of this little series. So, if you haven't seen those, be sure to check those out if you want to see how to make the sniper rifle itself. Now, I'm going to make one more tutorial for this little series where we're going to be modeling the bipod. So, if you want to see that tutorial as well, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned to the channel. If at any point during the tutorial you got any questions or comments, just drop them down below. I always do my best to respond to as many comments as I can. We're going to start making a scope by just adding a cube here in the middle on top of our railing. Let's go to side view and let's make sure this aligns with the reference picture right there. And we're just going to kind of trace out the shape here. Okay, align that with the shape there. And we also want to make sure quite obviously that it's a little bit wider than uh, the railing there so that it hugs the railing and it holds on to it in a sense. But perhaps it's better if we, uh... now let's just do that. Let's just make it hug the railing right now for now. And then we're going to take care of this part a little bit later. And uh, let's have a look back at our reference here. We have two parts that come out, that come out of the, uh, uh, out of this little shape here that we just created. So let's add a bevel or a loop cut with a bevel, which is the equivalent of adding two loop cuts. And then we're also going to bevel this part at the top here because it has to be slightly narrower at the top, as you can also see over here. And we take these two faces and once again we extrude them out. And we use those two faces to create, uh, to create these parts which hold, or these rings which hold uh, the scope in place. Okay. So let's extrude that up. And then uh, we're going to add a loop cut over here. Perhaps it's better if we do these as circles. So let's delete these faces. Let's delete these faces. And uh, let's think about how exactly we're going to do this for a minute. Because this seems to be like a perfectly circular face. It's probably ideal if we just use. Uh, uh, use some planes for this. So we know this is going to be the height. We can use this for the top. Okay, let's delete these faces here. Use this for the top. And we know that we can extrude these faces or the edges out of these uh, two faces. And extrude those outwards and pull them down. And with some beveling or a subdivision service modifier, you can imagine this is going to take up a shape very similar to this one here. We only have to make sure that we know what exactly the width is going to be. We can take those two, and this still has the same uh, the same width as uh, this part here, where it joins into the rest. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and add a subdivision service modifier to these two parts alone. So let's separate those. Separate those and add a subdivision service modifier. And we're going to delete these extra faces here on top. Subdivision service modifier with a loop cut right down the middle. And uh, the reason for this loop cut is that we're going to want to create these two holes for the screws right there. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to make these two faces just a little bit wider. Or these two shapes just a little wider. So we're going to take this side first, extrude this out, and then scale it out on the y-axis. Made a little mistake there. Let's do this again. We're going to take these two uh, edge loops in the sides here, extrude them out, and scale them up on the y axis by about 1.1, just a little bit to give them a squarier shape. We're going to add another loop cut on each side, like this. Okay. And then we're going to want to insert a face here. So let's extrude this, right click, extrude this, right click, and the same thing on the other side. Okay. So let's select all those extruded faces now. And then let's move the pivot point to individual origins and scale that down a little. And then we can extrude this once again, but this time we're going to take them down inwards and scale them to zero on the Z axis. Something like that, right? We want to make sure they don't go down below, below this uh, surface over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to flatten these new faces out with the bottom of the shape. So our 3D cursor is over here. 3D cursor's pivot point, we're going to scale that down to zero. 
and we're going to delete that because we're going to want to have the same thing on the other side. Okay. And then optionally, what we can also do is uh, extrude this out a little further, but I think it's going to look only messy because of what we just created, the holes. So we're going to leave it at that. We're not going to get greedy on the detail. And uh, let's see how this works out now. Maybe we are going to have to add some uh, thickness to this. So we are going to have to take these two. Yes, this edge and this edge. We are going to have to take that down just a little further. Okay. And in that case, let's also use a 3D cursor to, again, at the bottom of this to correct this, to make sure that this is at the bottom. This goes all the way down to the bottom of this shape. All right. Now, once we do that, we are going to simply just duplicate this shape uh, here. We're going to duplicate this surface and flatten it out at the bottom right there. Okay. Or perhaps that's not the best idea because if we have to have a circle, circular hole in here. Okay. So for now, this is flat. This is flat right here. We have to just take our time to think about this and make sure that we get the right, uh, the right shape and we get exactly what we want there. Okay, so let's fill this in one by one. We're going to, in fact, uh, duplicate some of the faces from the top here. So we're going to duplicate this. Duplicate it, scale it to zero with the 3D cursor. Correct the normals. Remove the doubles. We're also going to take these faces. We're going to do the same thing. Okay, just like that. We're also going to add some loop cuts here to, to flatten this part out a little bit better. And now we have some perfect holes going through the middle here, except we're going to make them a little bit, uh, a little bit narrower by scaling the, them down on the Y axis, just so they're, uh, they're perfectly, perfectly round, right? Like that. But we can also add another loop cut there to make them a little sharper, like so. Now that's going to do it. And let's also make a loop cut here and duplicate all this to the other side as well. Okay, so 3D cursor here, pivot point to 3D cursor, duplicate everything, right click and scale it to minus one on the X axis, remove the doubles and correct the normals. And now we are going to also uh, place our the 3D cursor here in the middle. And this is where we're going to place our circle, which is going to be holding our scope. Okay. A circle with, let's say, we don't need more than 16 vertices because of our uh, subdivision surface modifier. But we're going to have to scale this way down. And it should hopefully only be a little bit smaller than this. Now it seems here that uh, our circle is considerably smaller than, uh, than what should be necessary for the scope. Which simply means that we're going to have to increase the scale of this entire object. Okay, so if we make sure that the circle is about the same size as the scope, as it should be, okay, like that, more or less, maybe just a little larger and just a little lower. Okay, something like that is going to do it. Like that, just, let's just double check, make sure that we have it right. Okay, a little bit higher like that, okay. And now what we want to do is also increase the scale of this entire object. Okay. We're going to scale this up to whatever is necessary so that when we bring it down, it comes right about to half, half of this object. Okay. So we're going to place the, the origin of this object right in the middle there between these vertices. Place the origin there. And then we're going to snap that origin. We're going to snap that origin. We're going to level it down, flatten it out with the middle of this uh, circle here. So it's at the same height. Okay, notice this is a little bit higher. So pivot point is a 3D cursor. And we're going to go up here to options uh, and transform effect only locations. That way, when we scale this down to zero, it's only going to move it. It's not going to scale it down. And now this is perfectly in the middle of the circle. And the only thing that we have to do now is just uh, scale everything up a little bit. Uh, on the z-axis just to make sure it goes above this circle here okay and what we can do now is just use a circle 
merge this circle with this object right here. Okay, and let's move it to the side there. Scale it to zero with the Y axis. And uh, we're also going to extrude it out, bring it over to the other side, turn it into a cylinder. Okay, on the cylinder, we're going to delete the front and the top faces. And now we just need to delete the bottom half as well. Gonna make a loop cut right there. And another loop cut over here on the side. On each side so that it aligns with these loop cuts we have from before. Okay, like that. And then we can bridge these edge loops together. W, bridge edge loops. Same story is gonna happen over here. Bridge these edge loops. And now we can just go ahead and fill in this whole shape here. Now this is quite disastrous at this point. That's all right, we're gonna carefully just uh, fix that part by part, okay? So first of all, we're gonna try to uh, fill in this part over here. It's gonna be easier if we remove our subdivision surface for now. And uh, correct all the normals as well. Now let's get started with some of these faces over here. Okay, some of these up here. I'm gonna add three loop cuts there just so that topology works because we are using subdivisions, so topology might be pretty important here. Bridge the edge loops there. And over here as well. And now we really only have these few more faces to worry about here, which are a little bit tricky, certainly. So we may have to get rid of one of these loop cuts for instance, or the one at the bottom. Get rid of one of those loop cuts, and then we can connect. We can connect these edges well. And topology is going to be all right. We have a triangle there, but that should be okay. Let's see what that looks like. With a subdivision surface, it looks just fine. And then, of course, we have to make sure we do this on the other side as well. So let's just duplicate everything, all these faces down here, and scale them to minus one across the 3D cursor. Bring them over here. And then with a with 3D cursor in the middle, we're going to do the same thing and bring everything over to the other side of the shape as well. Okay, so duplicate this, scale it to minus one there, move the doubles, correct the normals. Now we can bring back our subdivision surface modifier. Now would be a good time to just correct, make sure that we have no mistakes here. For instance, we do have some issues over here. It's better to just delete this one entire half and then just mirror everything again. And now we're not going to have any of those issues anymore. Okay. Now we can just create a loop cut over here. Oh, this messes up our topology quite a little bit because of this circle, because of this triangle down here. So maybe the best idea would just be to select these entire two faces here entire flat surfaces and just extrude them out by just a tiny little bit just to flatten these parts out completely okay and that's gonna kind of give us more or less the shape that we need there okay so now it's not perfect but it's all right add another loop cut there to make this a little bit more uh, sharp like so and then at the bottom here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to duplicate this whole shape and scale it to minus one on the Z axis. We're going to separate this to a new object just so it doesn't merge together with the other one. But then we can kind of scale this down. We can kind of scale all this down a little bit just so it fits back under this frame here. fits back on the frame right there. We're going to give that some smooth shading. Shade smooth and then we're going to delete this side. Delete that. We don't want that. And we also want to delete this side because we're going to redo that by simply uh, duplicating this across to the other side. Okay. We're going to duplicate both of these two shapes. Okay, like that. These two we're going to keep as one, and these two we're going to keep as one. Okay, and now we have uh, two of these rings for holding our, 
our uh, scope. Now we can go ahead and add another cylinder here. This one's going to have 32, 32 vertices. I think 32 is going to be enough for the scope. So we're going to use a circle to create the cylinder. So we're actually just adding in a circle. Place that like so, fill it in, and take it through these rings. Take it over to the front here. Let's set our uh, pivot point back to the median. Then we're going to take it over here, extrude it out, scale it up, scale it up like that, and then extrude it out one more time till the end of the scope, where it seems that we have to, once again, just extrude it down just a little bit, just a little bit, and uh, and scale it down like that. Okay. Now. We're also going to take care of this in the back as well. Just push this all the way out here. I'm going to duplicate the circle at the end. Duplicate the circle at the end. I'm going to extrude it out one more time. Let's also take care of all these other details here while we're at it. We're going to extrude this out first, like this. And then we're just going to, going to scale it down a tiny bit like that. And finally, we can create uh, our rim, the rest of our edges over here. Like that. We have another little uh, little part sticking inwards over here, so let's also take care of that right away. Like so. And we are going to make a large bevel on this part here. And let's just have a look at what this scope looks like on this part. A little bit narrower when we take it inwards, and this is presumably where the glass is going to be located. We can just leave it at that. Now, since we have a glass there, we can also just kind of make a shape like this and then bevel it, bevel it like that, and get that kind of lens shape at the back there. Hopefully I'm doing that right. And then uh, we're also going to do the same thing in the front here. We take a look at the scope from the front. I'm going to extrude this part inwards a little, like that. Give it a nice thin rim. Shoot it inwards. And again, outwards, scale it down. And give it a nice bevel like that. Kind of like a lens. Maybe we'll want to make it a little bit more round. I'm going to do something like that. All right, like so. And now this is the basic shape of our scope that we need over here. So now we're gonna have to do a couple of other things like uh, this part in here, holding uh, this sphere here, holding these uh, adjustment rings. So we're gonna use a cube for that. We're gonna add a cube right there. We're going to see if we can get this kind of shape just flat on top by using a subdivision surface modifier. Okay. And what, the way I intend to do that is by just extruding out each face individually and selecting each face. Selecting each face and then with individual origins, pivot points, just scaling it down a little. Scaling it down. Extruding it again to sharpen it, and I think this more or less gives us the kind of shape that we need there. Okay, something like that. Let's scale that all the way down with a median point uh, as the pivot point again. We have to make sure we disable effect locations only there. And the side view, let's bring this into place. Something like that is going to do it. Be a little smaller, like that. And now we're going to go up here and we're going to add a cylinder or a circle with 32 vertices. And this is going to be the first adjustment ring. I have no idea what each of these adjustment rings are for. If anybody knows uh, exactly what these do separately, do let me know in the comments. I'd be pretty interested to know about this. And then uh, we're going to scale this down one more time. 
and then bring it up. Maybe this should be a little bit narrower. Okay, so let's bevel that a little. We're also going to bevel all these other edges a little bit more. Something like that. Okay. And then we have two more on the sides here. And these two are going to be pretty much identical. So we can go ahead and add a circle here. So add a circle here. Rotate that, turn it down, or scale it down. And then uh, we're going to extrude it out a little bit. And once again, we're going to have this other part, which is kind of like the knurling or something, or the part that makes it a little bit more grippy. I'm going to scale that up and scale it down on the x-axis. And we're just going to bevel that. Maybe we'll scale it a bit, a bit higher up on the x-axis. Then we're just going to bevel it like that. Now we're going to take this face, take this face like this, and uh, we're going to duplicate this whole thing onto the other side of this little cube, because we have the same thing on both sides. So scale this to minus one, and cross the 3D cursor in the middle there. Okay. And we're going to parent all these onto this little central piece. We're going to par parent the central piece to the scope. Okay. We're going to parent all this other stuff to the scope as well. Parent all that right there. And let's see if we have any more of these little details that we have to do. We have a similar shape over here in the back, which is a little bit smaller. So let's duplicate that. Let's duplicate that, place it over here. And this only seems to be on the left side of the gun, like this. And that has one little, one other little adjustment ring. We're going to duplicate one of these, okay? Duplicate this one and separate it. it. Has the same origin there, and we're just going to snap that over here. Snap that over here and place it right there. And we're also going to add some smooth shading to everything which means we also have to take care of the auto smooth. Auto smooth for 45 degrees. Seems like it's not quite going to cut it here. Only because of this part. We're going to do this one in 30 degrees and hopefully this is going to be all right. Auto smooth here, same story, 30 degrees. Let's correct the normals on this one. Auto smooth on 30 degrees. And this one as well, just to fix these ugly shading issues around the base. Now the scope is almost ready, except for a few little details. Let's parent this together. Parent this to the scope as well. And uh, we're going to go over here and make this little part. Little part here is also some kind of an adjustment ring of some sort. What it does exactly, I do not know, but it doesn't matter because we're just modeling it. I'm going to go over here, make it a circle here, and separate that to a new object. Extrude that object out. It seems to go all the way back to here, so let's extrude it one more time. Take it to the back here, and then we're going to bevel that slightly. And if necessary, we might want to scale that. We're not going to scale it down. I'm going to bevel that slightly. And then in the front here, we're not going to bevel anything, but we're going to go on top here, take this edge here. I'm going to add a little cube there. A very, very, very small cube. And this is just going to be one of the ridges. One of the ridges here on top. We're gripping this little piece here. As you can see, something like this is sticking out of the top here. So uh, we're going to focus on this little piece here. And uh, we're going to make this a lot thinner. And we're going to bevel the sides. We're going to bevel all the sides. In fact, we might even want to use a subdivision service modifier on this. just to give it a slightly nicer shape like that. I'm going to delete all the faces at the bottom. 
we're going to bring all the faces up to the surface to make this a little tighter. I'm going to add some smooth shading to that. And auto smooth on this is going to be up to 45 or so. 45 or 50 degrees. And then we're going to have to rotate this as many times as is necessary. And the way we can do that is take this shape, duplicate it and rotate it around the 3D cursor, which is placed in the middle of the cylinder. I'm going to rotate it by 180 degrees. 180, then duplicate again and rotate around the Y axis by 90 degrees. And do that again with 45 and then 22, 22.5 that is, and then 11.25 and as many times as necessary, you just keep halving the number. And this is the, the object that we want there. So we're going to apply this subdivision surface. We're going to merge them together with this shape down here. Yeah, it's a smooth shading to that. And we're going to set that to 50 degrees and hopefully that's going to work for us. And it does. And then, of course, you might want to make this just a little wider. Just so that we can scale this part inwards a little bit. Make another little edge there. Just like that. And that should do the trick for this part as well. Okay. I notice we perhaps made a little too many of these, but that's all right. And we're also going to take some of these screws that we created here before in the barrel. One of these screws. And we're going to place it over here in this hole. We'll place our 3D cursor there. Snap that little screw over there. And we're going to change uh, change the rotation of this screw so it's facing flat upwards 90 degrees like that just make sure it fits snugly into the hole means that this hole here is not quite wide enough we're going to select this inner selection oh, we're not even going to bother with that we're just going to place a screw inside and call it a day Place that screw in there and call it a day. It's really not a visible part. And we're also going to do that on the other side. Okay, this side and also the other side. Okay. And now just, uh, just to make it so it's not transparent, so you can't see through the hole there, we're going to add some kind of a plane at the bottom here. Okay, just some kind of little plane, a little cube, a little separating object there. A little separating object there. Perhaps we're going to keep it separate just so it doesn't have the subdivision surface on it. Okay, make that very, very thin. I'm going to scale it up. Scale it up, okay. Scale it up and just fit it in there so it separates uh, separates these two pieces. Just so we can't see through them. And we're of course going to do this on the other side as well. Scale it to minus one on the x-axis. And then we're going to duplicate that over to the other holding ring as well. So minus one there, and we're going to do the same thing with the screws here. Okay, select all these screws and scale them to minus one on the y axis and place them over there as well. So now we have the screws and the planes there, which we also want to parent to uh, the scope. Okay, we're going to parent it to this ring here, and both the rings are parented to the scope, so that's going to be in place there. Now let's have a look. We also have a couple of a uh, couple of screws here on the side. It means we really just need to place another circle over here. Give that circle 16 vertices. And 
and then rotate it so it's facing the, the side of this face here. Like this. And then we're going to use that as a kind of, it's just going to hold it in place. Then we're going to use another part, which is going to be the actual screw. So a circle with, let's say, 18, because that's 3 times 6, 18 vertices. Okay. And the reason we're using a multiple of 6 is so that we can merge, uh, so we can join this together with a hex, uh, hexagonal circle in the middle. Like this. So we can take this and just connect all these parts nicely. Okay. Like this. And like this. We can delete most of these uh, edge loops once we uh, extrude this, of course. Uh oh. Having some trouble selecting all this. It's a very messy shape. And extrude that out a little bit. And then we can just delete or dissolve some of these edges finally. We're going to try to do the same thing at the back here. Instead, we're going to delete all the faces at the back. Delete all the faces because we don't need them at all. And we're also going to bevel some of these. Bevel this a little bit just to add an unnecessary level of detail. And then we're going to bevel this as well. We're going to take this screw and we're going to bring it over to the other side. Scale it to minus one across the y axis there. And we also want to bring it here into the middle. Okay. I'm going to duplicate this, separate it to a new object, and snap it right there to the middle. Just like that. So we can merge all these together and then parent them or join them with the scope. Just like that. Now, we also probably need to do this on the other side, or not. This other side is completely flat here, so we're not going to do it either. And uh, this is pretty much going to be it for the holder of the scope, except we also want to make these little parts here hug. We want to make them hug the railing so it looks realistic. Okay. We're going to add some loop cuts right there. I'm going to take this part and this part. I'm going to extrude that downwards so it goes just over the edge here. Just over the edge. I'm going to extrude it again. Extrude it again right there. And then extrude it one more time and take it down as far as it needs to go. As far as it needs to go at the bottom there. And then we're just going to take these faces at the bottom there. Inside, these are kind of hard to reach faces. But that's all right. I'm going to select all those faces and we're going to scale them closer together. Then as you can see, they just kind of grab, grab onto the railing in theory. It's not perfect, but you understand the idea. Okay, something like this. And that's going to be a nice little detail to have there. Now let's also just uh, bevel some of these other edges around here just to make this uh, shade a little better afterwards. Okay, just a thin bevel right there with a couple of edges. And uh, we might also want to bevel some of these uh, more important edges like this one here. Just because why not? At this point, it really doesn't make much of a uh, much of a difference in terms of the polygons anymore, so we might as well go all the way with the details. And then let's do another little double check to make sure that we got every part, every part of the scope. We got all the, the adjustment rings there. This part is a little bit different from uh, what I have on my reference, but I'm going to exclude that this time. And let's also check our reference, and it seems that in our reference we didn't really miss anything. So our scope is pretty much ready to go. 
going to parent everything. Everything is already parented, so we don't even have to do that. But uh, we are going to parent the scope to this part here. Okay, we're going to remove this clear parents. We're going to parent the scope to the base. And we're going to parent the base to the rest of the gun, to the railing. Okay, the railing should be parented. Some of these other parts here. The receiver, perhaps, you want to call it. Which should, of course, be parented to the body of the gun. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. In the next video, we're going to be modeling the bipod for the sniper rifle. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see that tutorial as well. Again, if you have any comments or questions, just drop them down below. I always do my best to respond to as many comments as I can.